Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's EasyScape, and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you about the Pokemon Go tier list, how to efficiently build your team, I'm going to be explaining Pokemon CPs or combat powers, Pokemon moves and IVs, and how to calculate them. Before I start, a big shout out to the Silk Road subreddit for providing all of the information. I'll be linking the sources in the description. So the first thing I want to talk about is CPs. CP is basically how physically strong your Pokemon is and how much damage it'll deal in battle. Now a lot of people playing Pokemon Go think that CP scales with your trainer level, which it does, it, it, which it does, but every Pokemon has a different CP cap than each other, and certain Pokemon power up faster and in larger increments than others. For instance, say you're a level 20 trainer and you have an Onix and a Vaporeon. At the same time that you could be at 1000 CP on your Onix and not be able to power up anymore, you'd also be able to power up to 1500 on your Vaporeon before you weren't able to anymore. Now these are random estimates, but you can see how this really affects how you set up your team. CP wise, Onyx is actually the second worst Pokemon I believe you can get. You can check out the CP tier list in the description. But I mean, if you've ever looked at a gym and saw that someone is the same level as you, but they had a way higher CP Pokemon, that's because that Pokemon is higher on the CP tier list than yours is. Now this doesn't go based on individual Pokemon, it's not like, wow this Pidgey can get a higher CP than this Pidgey. That's not how it works. You can find a Pidgey at a higher CP, but they can both only power up to the same amount, and another Pokemon would be able to get a higher CP than that. So you really want to keep this in mind whenever you're building your team. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about in this video is Pokemon moves and how important they are. Now Pokemon moves, in my opinion, are even more important than CPs or anything like that. Pokemon moves can be extremely useful and right here I'm going to be showing an example. So we're looking at my Hypno right here and you see in those Zen Headbutt. Well, there's also another move it could have learned, which would have been Confusion. Now, just looking at this little picture here, you have no idea which one's better, but there's a chart that you can see in the description that will actually tell you that Zen Headbutt is twice as good. Everything is in, everything is in increments of damage per minute, and Zen Headbutt is twice as good as that move right there. Which is pretty crazy, it's, it's just a move, but it, it's able to do twice as much damage. Now, Psyshock really isn't that good. Maybe if I could have had it know the move Psychic, that would have been actually better. But, you know, this was about as best as I could find. I have a bunch of Hypnos, and I wasn't able to get one to have Psychic. I was able to get one that has Shadow Ball, but that wasn't really as good as Psyshock, in my opinion. It was good if I was going against other type Pokemon, but you guys kind of get the point. Definitely pay attention to your the Pokemon moves and whenever you're looking for a high CP Pokemon you should also be looking at their moves and making sure that you're making the right choice before you you know power them up or anything like that I will note that when you when you evolve a Pokemon they'll get a different moves so there's no way to tell whether you get those moves or not it's just kind of lucky and you have to keep trying if you want to get a certain Pokemon okay guys and the last thing I want to talk about this video is going to be IVs. Now these are called individual values. Now remember before when I said that combat power, you know, the ceiling for it, that wasn't dependent at all per Pokemon. But IVs, like it says in the name of it, is in completely independent depending on the Pokemon that you are. So let's look at my Hypno right now. And there's a calculator you can use that's going to be in the description. Now what this calculator does is it takes your Pokemon name, the CP that it's at, whether you powered it up or not, and then also looking at its HP, and it will tell you how perfect your Pokemon is, like w the range of how good it is. So you know, saying a low, uh, like a lower IV Pokemon would be something in like the 20% range, or my Hypno is in the 75 to 84% range. You want to try and get a Pokemon in the 90s, but at this stage in the game, I was really just kind of looking for something that I could go have fun with, and later on I'll start worrying about more stuff like that. But yeah, you this is something that is at least, you know, should be noted, duly noted, you know, after CPs or ap after you look at CPs of Pokemon, you know, making sure they're high up in the tier list, that's very important, making sure that they have good moves, and also not even looking at the CP tier list, because I wouldn't use that, I would use this tier list right here that puts everything in consideration, puts IVs, like base IV stats, it puts CP, and it puts moves. So. Like, the CP tier list probably says, like, Dragonite at the moment is the strongest Pokemon, but this tier list says that Snorlax is just based on, you know, he has really, he has a lot of HP, has pretty good damage, has a good move called Lick, which does a lot of damage per minute, and, you know, he stands his best against a lot of other Pokemon. Now, Hypno is pretty decent, but I'm going to be trying to get some better Pokemon later on. 
I hope this video cleared up like a lot of things you might not know about Pokemon Go and to really put thought and time into your build because you know once you spend all that Stardust you're gonna have to spend a long long time getting all of it back so make sure you make a good choice and when setting up your team also guys there's gonna be a straw poll in the description if I should start up some Pokemon Go vlogs I really don't care whether I do or not I think it'd be a lot of fun I'd go pick up a GoPro so you guys can go vote in the straw poll in the description or if I just stick to RuneScape videos but it would be a lot easier to make videos on that it would be because it would be all live commentary unlike stuff like this and I would be probably getting a GoPro and just doing some fun adventures around um, Ohio and I'd probably branch out if you know the series got popular enough I'd go really anywhere so yeah let me know what you guys think about that um, sorry I haven't uploaded in like two weeks I've just been really busy with work and classes and everything else I like to do but they'll slowly come and I'll probably start live streaming again soon but yeah I guess um, later